Hey guys, uh, good afternoon and welcome to the afternoon of uh, the first day of the Joomla World Conference. My name is Steve Birch and my presentation is the Joomla family tree. I chose this topic which is probably going to require a little bit of explanation. Uh, I chose it for a couple of reasons. One, uh, I come to quite a lot of these events and I got bored with the kind of now step one, you do this. Step two, you do this. And I was giving those presentations, I wanted to try something different. And the second reason beyond trying something different was, well, I've kind of lost my voice today. And this presentation involves quite a lot of talking from you guys and quite a lot of you guys giving your ideas back. And so, fingers crossed, I won't need to do too much talking and my voice will last the next hour or so. The idea for the presentation, the idea for talking about the Joomla family tree came about a few months ago. We were working on Joomla 3 and specifically on the marketing materials for it. And we needed the help of quite a lot of people in this room that I can see. And we needed designers. We needed some writers. We needed translators. and. We were trying to rope those people in. Quite a few of them hadn't actually worked with Joomla in the community. They hadn't contributed before, and we were dealing with getting them on board and getting them up to speed. And it was hard sometimes. And it got me thinking about the process of how we get people involved in a community. And what I did in preparation for this event was simply send out a survey with two questions about how people got involved in Joomla and I sent it out to people that had joined the Joomla community just a couple of months ago and people that were involved in the Joomla community since before it was even Joomla, since the Mambo days and I just had a couple of questions. The first question was who was responsible for actually turning you into a contributor? Who was the person who actually said, hey, you've got some talent, you're someone who could do some code, could do some testing, who could just do something for Joomla? Who was the one that actually persuaded you that you had something worthwhile to contribute? That was question one. And question two, how did that person actually inspire you? What was it about? Did they give a good presentation? Were they really encouraging about the first bits of work that you've done? Or were they simply your boss and said, Oi, you're doing Joomla and you're going to like it or you're going to lump it. What was it that actually, what did they do that actually gave the push to get you involved in Joomla? And we had about 60 or 70 replies and it was just two questions, and we had replies literally from people that had been in the community a month and people that had been in there six, seven years. Question one was who? Who was actually responsible for getting you involved in Joomla in the first place? And a couple of, a couple of days ago, I stopped the form and started putting it together, and what I was able to do was actually build a little... Joomla family tree. Yeah. And it turned out that some people, including some people in this room, have lots of descendants. They've been inspiring people. These are, it's not meant to be a competition, um, these are some of the people who came up as inspiring people often. Uh, Wilco Janssen, um, I'm sure quite a few of you guys in the room uh, know and have seen at different events. Amy Stephen. Um, we also had a few people who said that they were the most inspiring person that got them involved. <laughs> um, and you, you can probably think of a few people around this conference who gave that answer. Um, yeah. You, Hey, you might see one of them wearing a Joomla jacket uh, <laughs> later. But, uh, um, but what stood out to me was the people who inspired the most 
really weren't that far ahead of everyone else. There was Wilco with six, Amy with five, and then we were down to Elon, to, uh, to Javier sitting in the front row, to Lewis, to Brian, um, and then 35 other people, 35 people who had just inspired one extra person. And we were able to actually trace some family trees. Kyle, sitting in the back there, said that the person that inspired him and got him involved in Joomla, uh, you guys all saw Kyle earlier, pretty much the guy that did the bulk of the work and the bulk of the leadership to get Joomla 3 into its new bootstrap design was inspired by the guy sitting right next to him there, Ryan. Uh, Ryan, for those of you who don't know, is uh, was for several years the president of Open Source Matters, which was the, the legal body that uh, helps and organizes the Joomla project. And there's Wilco, the aforementioned inspiration to so many people in the middle. And Wilco, as an inspiration, he named Lewis. And we saw Lewis giving his presentation earlier. And Lewis named uh, Johan Janssens, who wrote most of Joomla 1.5. And so literally, from one person inspiring the next, you started with the main developer, the main developer for Joomla 1.5. You went to one of the main developers for the, the Joomla platform, to another huge contributor to 1.5, to the president of Open Source Matters, to the uh, to the main designer of Joomla 3. One person got the ball rolling and inspired the next, who inspired the next, who inspired the next. Uh, Kyle, do you mind if I pick on you quickly? Um, what was it about Ryan that actually, um, not to get too lovey-dovey and all that, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, what, what did Ryan actually do to get you involved? <laughs> uh, we got a bromance going on. <laughs> it, uh, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, you see, yeah, any problems? I'll fix it for you. And at the time, I was uh, a new on the outside, and he was the president, right? Yeah. I was like, what's the president of Google for? <laughs> <laughs> And so he basically gave you permission to some extent. He said, I trust you. You have the skills. Yeah. yeah. Hey, um, Ryan, uh, the, the knock-on question. What was it about Wilco that um, helped you get involved? <laughs> yeah. Almost the same thing that Kyle said. The, <laughs> yeah. He, the same things that have been in your mind a couple of years or a few years before. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, well, this is a little bit of an oversimplified version. It, uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it takes uh, a village. I, 
I live in North Georgia, if you've ever seen Deliverance. Um, we, that's about where we live. Um, yeah, I know about that kind of stuff. Um, and, uh, it, yeah, but <laughs> I, I'm not even going to try and pretend to be uh, a native Georgian. Um, and uh, Lewis, if you don't mind, um, the same question for you. you what was it, um, you, you mentioned Johan, how did he basically push you to get involved? <laughs> <laughs> so it was similar in a way to what Ryan said to Kyle. Like, you can do this. I have trust. I know that you can. You can code up to the standards needed. You can do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you might see some of those names again. It was a uh, well a fairly productive set of inspirations. Um, for some reason, this guy Wilco keeps on coming up. Um, I think between him and Lewis and perhaps Johan, I think those guys were pretty much the patient zeros of uh, Joomla. They seem to have inspired uh, a whole raft of people. In this case, the Johan to Lewis to Wilco chain produced Robert the guy who's the main organizer and the main leader of this event here and of Jay Beyond in Europe. Um, Robert, um, how was it that you actually, I know you named several people, but how did you actually become a Joomla contributor? How did they get you involved? <laughs> so you guys, A, speak your mind, and uh, B, drink a lot, and you had, y you found something in common, it's uh, a common bond, yeah. And uh, Robert Fotis, who writes K2 and uh, runs Joomla Works, not here, but named you as an inspiration. He found the coding that you'd done. And he said that's what inspired him. Uh, the guy's written some of the most ex um, popular Joomla extensions ever made. And um, he fought. Yeah. <laughs> We named Wilco as the person with the most con the most inspiration, uh, most people following in his footpath. Well, one of the people he inspired was Amy Stephen, who came second on the list that we saw. And so from Johan to Lewis to Wilco to Amy uh, to Chad, who big involvement in the Joomla Summer of Code, um, helping out in all sorts of ways. Um, how was it that Amy got you involved?
and so, yeah. <laughs> It, and and so there's almost uh, it's similar to the guys at the back. Uh, there's a little reluctance, a little hesitation, and there was someone who basically pushed and said, "You can do that. That's something you're more than capable of doing. I believe in you." Um, and well, that was one branch with several end results. There are many like that in the in the Joomla world. To throw out just another. Um, this guy on the left, his name is Norm, and one day I, he was just helping on the Joomla forums, uh, just helping a newbie get started, asking some questions. The newbie apparently was really embarrassed and didn't didn't want to get uh, shouted out by someone who was far more knowledgeable than him. And well, the guy who is now president of Open Source Matters, um, do you mind taking on the story from there? And you, you did in a big way. You played a big part in uh, starting the Joomla magazine. And there's uh, a dozen or so contributors, um, plus lots of writers for the magazine here, uh, including a couple of people that named Paul as their inspiration for getting involved. Um, Alice, you're on the Open Source Matters board as well, as well now. Um, how was it that you got wrapped up in Joomla?
it goes downhill pretty quickly, right? <laughs> and, uh, and Alice, you and uh, Diane, you guys are both Americans living in Paris, is that right? Uh, did you guys know each other before the magazine? Okay. <laughs> cool. Thanks. And we've been using quite a few American examples too, but we found examples from overseas as well. Uh, Alex on the left-hand side is a uh, a long-time um, a long-time contributor from Germany, and somehow managed to inspire. Well, Javier, you're on the. Uh, the board of directors as well from Spain. How did a German guy manage to inspire you in Spain to get involved? <laughs> You're in good company now, Diane. Hey, uh, there. We go. So, uh, starting in 2009, we organized the Next Media Day, and I did my presentation on something. Maybe Alex liked it there, so I was asking to bring you all the same board and you know, talk to me. And I, at this point, I decided that I, since it came a day, to allow other people in the international community to make it. To, to, you know, to come together to the main 
Yeah. What um, seemed to have worked, we had quite a few people name you as the person that inspired them to get moving in Joomla. Um, and I know I see other people in the room that replied as well. Um, Gabe, uh, you gave a good reply. How was it that you managed to get started? So Vic was a partner, sort of guided you, helped, worked with you, um, gave you some assistance. Cool. Um, and an open floor. Do any of um, any of the rest of you guys have a core cool story about how you got involved in Joomla? Uh, yeah, you do. <laughs> well, I'm hoping to find a few people in the room that aren't involved yet. Um, do you have one? The cursing presentation now. Uh, <laughs> this time around. <laughs> 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 it, it, it's almost like Dracula, but 
Ted Jumu. Jack Jumula. Ted. Ted. Cool, thanks. Um, and anyone else have a go for it? <laughs> Wait, was Diane harassing you? Was Diane harassing you? Oh. <laughs> Go for it. Okay, um, I have, it, it's a general presentation, at least of sorts. Um, I know Sander sitting right there, you're working on more specific ways to get people involved. Um, I know when we were doing the marketing, um, a lot of people were busy and they basically said what we need is a to-do list. You basically say, I need X, Y, and Z done. I work uh, 14 hours a day, I have an hour to spare. I, I can't follow all your conversations. Um, and I think, Sandra, you're thinking of, uh, and you're looking for input, right, on how to build a volunteer um, pool of tasks and of people that can help. Uh, does anyone have a recommendation for someone he can see? Uh,
what it may be you find yourself in a similar situation to say Kyle or to Lewis you have an idea you want to get something done and it's our job it's uh, as the people involved currently to hook you up and to say you can do it and give you the opportunity and uh, you've got a couple of people volunteering to hopefully put you in touch with the right person and get the ball rolling um, and so we did this two question survey and we managed to come up with a lot of great responses from you guys and from other people around the world telling stories just like that. And it turns out that you sometimes get people uh, Milwaukee and Milwaukee. You sometimes get people uh, Paris and Paris, people who are uh, close to each other. But just like with uh, Paul, you're in Colorado, and the person that helped you was in Australia, we just found connections from all over the world. You'd get... Um, You'd get uh, Irish people helping American people. You get Australians helping Belgian people. Uh, you get people from the Philippines helping people from Denmark. There was really almost no pattern between the the people that uh, you were able to inspire. If you treated them the right way, uh, if you gave them an opportunity, all over the world you were able to help people out. And as to question two, what was it that actually got people involved? What was it about the person who was the inspiration? What was it they did? Well, we basically had about four answers. I looked through all the answers and put them into about one of four categories. Um, we have the uh, stubborn so-and-sos in the middle again, the people that said, ah, I don't need any goddamn help. I did it all by myself. Um, <laughs> They're, they're still hanging around. But the rest of them fell into three categories. Uh, there was a couple of people, such as um, uh, Lynn, uh, yourself, Jen, um, who, uh, who came in through their work, and maybe their boss got them involved. But for the overwhelming majority of people, it was a, a personal contact, and it was one person that basically said, you're welcome. You have talent. The number one answer was someone actually invited you and said, this is a role, this is something you can do, and this is something that you should do. There was someone in the community who was proactive and said, ah, I, I've, look, I've looked at you. Um, for example, for Chad, I've looked at you. I know you can code. You can do better than you're doing. I uh, looked at Lewis and said, hey, you're an equal of me. You should come. I have a role for you. You can work with me. You have the talent to get it done. The second most popular answer was for people like uh, Paul. There was someone who was simply welcoming, and um, probably Kevin's story falls into a um, maybe a, a mix of the two, perhaps, but someone invited him and then was welcoming as well. Um, sat him down with a beer, made him feel welcome, gave a friendly answer on the forum. And so the overwhelming majority of people got involved because there was some leadership and someone said, I believe in you, I like you, you're welcome in here, this is a good place for you. And speaking to the people who are in charge now, this is essentially your role. There's, uh, I'm looking at maybe 15 to 20 people, this is what I envisage the role of the people in leadership to be. Basically saying, hey, there's hundreds, thousands of talented people out there, and it's your job to identify them and give them opportunities to make them feel welcome, and to basically say, we want you. And um, I'm sorry, the gentleman's name there? Hey, Emmanuel. It, for those of you guys who are not involved in Joomla, it's basically your job to walk up and say, Hi, I'm, I'm available, I can help. But the onus really falls on you guys in leadership to step up and say, I believe in you, we want you, we want you here in this community. And one of the really interesting things that came out of the survey was there are no huge, great big leaders. Uh, there's Wilco, inspired uh, five or six people in our survey. Amy uh, inspired a similar number. But for the vast majority, it was just the ordinary people. 
these are all the other names that were thrown out. Um, Gabe, you inspired Vic. Uh, Vic got a call out for inspiring someone else. Uh, Robert, you inspired Fotis. Um, there's so many people, even those are who are not in leadership, but people who just know their way around a little bit, they got a shout out for inspiring someone, for making someone feel welcome. And um, I was um, pulling up the big list of names in comparison and wasn't able to create such a nice little graphic. I'm uh, not much of a graphics guy at all. But this is an example from the Drupal community. And I love Drupal, uh, make quite a lot of money out of it, so I'm not um, criticizing it in any way. But a similar example is much more key person centric, if that's a word. There were some real leaders, probably three or four, who inspired almost the majority of the people. And that's the way they work. Uh, they have a, a big company and some big and very talented leaders with the time to uh, put into building their community. Joomla doesn't quite work that way. Uh, Joomla, on the other hand, is more about all of the little people, the people in leadership, the people volunteering time, basically finding the time to say, we want you and you can help out. And to be honest, that's probably the biggest contribution that most of us are ever going to make to Joomla. You saw the knock-on effect of Johan, who did 1.5, to Lewis, to Wilco. Johan has gone from the project, uh, Wilco has gone from the project, but they've left behind a much ri richer legacy probably than any of their code. Um, the code we write, it's probably going to get changed in a couple of years. Uh, the extensions we write, we're probably going to get bored of them and leave them be. Uh, the websites we build, they're probably going to get rebuilt in three or four years. Uh, all that stuff is going to disappear. But the work that those guys did several years ago in inspiring other people, that's still going strong. They inspired someone who inspired someone who inspired someone. It, it's really about people as much as it is about code. Uh, and that's the reason that um, we come to a conference like this. You come to JM Beyond. And how many of you guys have written any code so far? OK, got a, a hand or, or two up. It, it's about people. That's what um, you guys can go back and you can go and uh, uh, do some coding in your own in your, um, in your office later. but. For the next few days, it's really all about people. And it's an opportunity for those of you guys who know your way around to basically say, we want you to someone. And that's my challenge for those of you guys who know your way around. I'd basically like you to say, we want you and to try and find a role for one person. And if you don't know your way around, just find someone who does. And well, as we end, uh, what are like those of you guys who in, who know your way around? Just for the next minute or so, think about op an opportunity you have, and we'll basically end by those of you guys that have an opportunity standing up and saying, "Hey, I run the magazine. You can, if you write, you can come and work with me. Uh, I do usability. If you uh, are a designer, you can come and work with me." So those of you guys that have opportunities, just think about them for a minute or so while we wrap up. And so that's essentially why we're here. And that's the most important thing you're going to do while you're a member of Joomla. It, it may be that in three years, you leave. You go and do something else. Your job changes. Your interests uh, change. The mine apocalypse happens. Um, you know, <laughs> it, it, there's probably a better than even chance that in three or four years, you're doing something completely non-Joomla related. Your code will disappear, most of your contributions will disappear, but your contributions in people, they're gonna last an awful lot longer. And so, I have a challenge for you guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have a challenge for you guys in the leadership to say we want you to someone, and for those of you who are not to go up and see if you can find an opportunity. And you know what the best way to make those connections happen is? You can go and get drunk tonight. That's <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah. 
<laughs> and to be honest, this presentation probably wouldn't be complete without a shout out to my own. When I was thinking about what I could do in terms of a different presentation, I watched a presentation by Joe LeBlanc. Uh, he has a presentation called Joomla's True Merit that he did at uh, J and Beyond a couple of years ago. Design versus develop dot com slash Joomla's True Merit. And if we were building a little family tree for this presentation, it, he would be the one that inspired me to try and do something different and to try and do this. So if you have 45 minutes, that's well worth watching. And so to finish, um, could we go around quickly? And those of you guys who have an opportunity, like you run the magazine, or you know someone with the JED, the Joomla Extensions Directory, could you just quickly stand up, stick your hand up, and say, I have this opportunity. We want you. Uh, Alice, I know you're jumping up there. Go for it. <laughs> hey, Sandra? Hey.
And on the flip side, is there anyone in the room who has a burning itch of something they want to do? Okay, well, you've seen a few people who can help you out. Uh, my name is Steve, I run the marketing. <laughs> and come and see me and buy me a beer later. I have an opportunity to help you get involved in the marketing. Thanks, guys.